I am Anil Kumar sharing with you an excellent question relating demand function, cost function, revenue, break even point, profit, and the graph of these. Here is the second part of the solution where we will discuss break even points. The question is if the price demand function is P of x equals to 50 minus 1.25x and the cost function C of x is 160 plus 10x, where x is number of items in thousands and cost is in dollars determine break-even points now there could be more than one break-even point now what is a break-even point well the break-even point is the one where revenue is equal to cost so if revenue equals to cost then we get break-even point now as you understand revenue is number of items times the demand function so what is revenue? Revenue is x times and the demand function is, let's write demand function first, right? Times t1 function. Okay, that is revenue. Cost function is already given to us c of x in this particular case. So let's relate the two. So revenue will be x times demand function is 50 minus 1.25x and the cost function is 160 minus 10x, right? So we get an equation from revenue equals to cost. This is a quadratic equation which we need to solve to figure out what is a break-even point, okay? So let's expand and simplify. So we get 50x minus 1.25x squared equals to 160 minus 10x. Bringing terms together to one side, Let's take them on the right side. So we get 1.25x squared, then minus 50x. We already have minus 10x here. Well, this is plus 10x. Let me change this to plus 10. Okay, the question is plus 10x. I wrote it wrong. So, okay, and we have plus 160, plus 160. Let's combine the like terms. We get 1.25x squared minus 40x plus 160. So that is the quadratic equation which can give us the break-even point. Now let us solve this quadratic equation using quadratic formula. Right? That is probably a good way of solving. So quadratic formula, as you remember, is, let me write down here itself, is x equals to minus b plus minus square root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2a when the equation is given standard form. Now in this particular case what is a? We have a as equals to 1.25 b is the coefficient of x which is minus 40 and c for us is equal to 160 right? So substituting these values, we can find the break-even point. So x is equals to minus of this, which is 40, plus or minus square root of minus 40 square minus 4 times a is 1.25 times 160. So that is b square minus 4 is see, divided by 2 times a which is 1.25 so we can solve this equation now let's use the calculator so within square root we have 40 squares so let me write down here 40 I can use because minus will become positive minus 4 times 1.25 times 160 is equal to 20 square root 2, right? 20 square root 2, let me write it in decimals. So we'll get 28.284, okay, divided by 2 times 1.25, let me write 2.50, correct. So that gives us two possible values. One is 40 plus 28.284 divided by 2.50. The other one is 40 minus, correct? So let's first add them and find a higher value, which is this plus 40 divided by 2.5. So 
So that gives us one solution, which is 16 plus 8 square root 2, approximately, that is 27.31, right? So that's one solution. The other one will be 40 minus 28.284 divided by 2.5, which is equal to 4.6. 8 okay 686 six, fine so we get two solutions here so the first one is so we get two solutions is with the negative sign so this one is 40 minus 28.28 divided by 2.5 and this one is 40 plus 28.28 divided by 2.5 so these are the two break-even points for the given function, right? So that means at these points, revenue and the cost will be equal, right? So we can write down our answer. And since the units are in thousands, so we can write the answer as break-even is at so approximately when it is in 1000 uh, at x equals to 4000 when we say 4.686 it is those many thousands right so it is 4686 items or the first one i don't remember but was let me write or let's say 27 310 items right because it is so many thousands right x is the number of units in thousands so that is the break even point so that is how you need to do this part so in the next video we'll learn about the profit function thank you